Well, hello, everybody. Well, this is Saturday morning. We're going to look at the lines for the NFL games for tomorrow. Uh, Detroit, we'll start with that one. We're looking at seven and a half at Indianapolis. And the total, I got to get that up on the screen. Sorry about that. Hmm. Well, I don't have the total right there. Where is it? Hmm. Oh, there it is. Got to get it. Okay, so we're a little better prepared there. Seven and a half and 50. And I'm seeing that's mostly 50 everywhere. So now here's the situation. You got Detroit coming off a 50 burger last week, going to Indianapolis with the young quarterback that had a good game last week, but he's in, been in it out. And of course, they're, they sat Flacco now that Richardson's back. But uh, most of the money has been coming in on the underdog in this Colts, uh, this, uh, this matchup, the Colts are getting the money. Um, and you, you might say, Hey, you know, you might have a little bit of a drop off. The lions are not going to put up those kind of numbers every week, but man, I'll tell you, their defense has been playing good too. I like the Colts, but, uh, the value, uh, was at eight at one point. It's down to seven and a half, not too big of a move. It's still over a touchdown. So that's positive. If you want to go that way. Kansas City is another big number, uh, 11, 11 and a half down to 10 and a half at 43 and a half. Who knows what you're going to get out of the Panthers? I mean, we talked about some teams that are quitting and they're going to be looking for making changes and coaches changes and, and adding players. And the players don't quit. I mean, the con- they, they're still trying to keep their jobs. They don't want to be bagging groceries next year. So these players are going to go out and play. We saw this the other night with Cleveland against Pittsburgh, you know, Pitt, Clinton's not going anywhere. We know that they got the Watson contract issue they have to deal with. And, and, uh, but that's a rivalry game, big game. They came to play. That was their Super Bowl. That was the game that meant so much to them. And of course, Pittsburgh overlooked them. They didn't look, Hey, this is, a, isn't a good team. It's a two and eight team. We're not, yeah, we don't care. It's going to be easy. It wasn't easy. So it was a hell of a game, though. It was fun to watch. But um, Carolyn is not in that position. Kansas City's coming off a loss. So this is a bit, bit difference. And the other thing about double-digit favorites this year in the NFL, it's very unusual. Usually, double-digit favorites, just take the dog and you know, walk away with a little bit of money at the end of the year. Not this year. Double-digit favorites have actually done very well. It's a different year. We do have a top and a bottom to the league. The Panthers could be one of those teams. We know they're not good, but it could be one of those teams that's just not going to come with much fire. And it's hard to know if Andy Reid's going to be able to get this team, Kansas Chiefs I'm talking about, to step up and start playing the way that they're capable of playing, which they have not been been doing that. They've they've had their injuries. They've had their, their bumps and bruises and everything, off field issues you know, wide receiver issues, but they're not coming with the passion every week. Mahomes hasn't looked like Mahomes. However, even though when they don't play great, they're close. So, and they, and they've been eking out some victories. And last week they happened to lose to a very good team up in Buffalo, Minnesota at Chicago. Darnold has not been feeling right. There's something going on there. Injury issue. He's still scheduled to play. It's uh, there um, three and a half, 39. It opened. It was in that range four. You could see fours at 40 and a half. And of course, you know, weather issues are always going to be a concern when you're talking about that region of the country. But Chicago Williams, different offensive coordinator, played with a different degree of passion. They had more uh, plays in for him to run the ball. You don't see your receiver. You won't get the first read, take off, run. And he did. And he had a good game. Minnesota is an indoor team playing in Chicago, cold weather. You know, it's not going to be warm. It's not tropical there for sure. Will they get any wind or rain or anything else that always can creep in. But uh, a lot of the, a lot of the sharp players are, are taking money on this. They're taking the dog. So keep that in mind. Now, of course, I don't see I don't see Chicago being the tanking team. I think they're playing with passion. I think they want to win. They didn't win last week because 
because of the the the, the field goal the block, but uh, they're playing. I don't see them dropping off. Now the next team here we have an issue. Dallas is at Washington. Washington is 10, nine and a half. Oh, I'd say mostly tens, 44 and a half. I don't know what the hell to think about Dallas. I mean, this is, this is a mess. You know, the coach is going to go. Um, Dak is on the bench. He's hurt. Uh, they paid him too much money. He's not worth that kind of money. He's a good quarterback. I'm not saying he's not a good quarterback. I'm saying he's just not at the Patrick Mahomes level. You know, he's not a top drawer. He's a, he's a B. It's, let's call him B. Maybe a B plus, but I'd say a B. Maybe there are no A's anymore. It just but B plus is about the highest he can probably go. But I'd say I'd say in this spot, Dallas could be a team because CD Lamb, he's a little banged up. You got offensive and defensive injuries. You got the coach issue. Is probably going to be looking for a job or retire. Jerry Jones, you never know what the hell he's going to do. And then you got Washington in a little bit of a regression. They're not playing the way they were. Uh, you have the young quarterback, uh, they, they have more film on him. They know how to defend him a little bit. But I would not be on Dallas in this spot. And normally I like dogs, but I just don't trust them. And, you know, they've, they've had some games this year where they just don't show up. I mean, the scores are margin. Talk about losing by margin. Wow. Tampa Bay at the Giants. So here's an interesting game. Baker Mayfield, since he's left Cleveland, he went to the Rams, played a couple games there, played good. Tampa, he's he's really played well. They're at the Giants. The Giants are a mess. Danny Dimes, they they sat Jones down. He's gone. They cut, you know, they didn't cut him. He asked to be gone. He's on the open market now. They're going to start um, Tommy DeVito. Uh, this is not a team that looks like they're trying to do anything. I, I'm I just don't see it that way. Tampa's got their injuries. They have their issues as well, but they're playing. And they're playing for a playoff spot, and they can still get there. They can still get into plays. Remember, this is the team that won the division the last couple of years. They're playing. They're five and a half or six. I don't know that the Giants are going to be able to put up any points. I don't know. With Tommy DeVito, with, I mean, I doubt it. I can't see him at 10 maybe. But um, the way I look at this game, it's uh, – 41 is the total. I don't know where you're getting 41 from points from. I, I just don't know. It was 42 and a half. Dog, dog money. No, not dog money, but under money came in. To me, I read this game as Tampa's going to win the game. And I don't know where the hell the Giants are going to get their points from. That's that's the way I look at it. New England at Miami. Miami 7, 46. You know, Miami... It had, it looked, I mean, they went out to the Rams to play the hell of a game. New England, they're coming. Now, this is a team you would say, hey, this team has every reason not to put up a big fight, get add draft choices, build, because we know they're in a rebuilding mode. They're not, that's what they're doing, but they got a quarterback that looks like maybe a franchise quarterback. He's playing well, he will push the ball. If the weather is good in Miami and it looks like it's okay, you might see some points in this game. I don't, it's, uh, you know, went from 44 and a half to 46. Yes, you're, you're pressing up and going over cri critical numbers now, but I don't, I don't see it being low scoring. I really don't. Tennessee at Houston. What a mess this is. Tennessee is, was supposed to be a better team than they, they've showed. Now, there's seven and a half point dog in this game. 40 and a half is the total. Levis, uh, yeah, he looks like a quarterback. He looks like he's got all the tools. Uh, but the mistakes eventually will catch up to you. The problem here is Houston's been kind of in a, in a re regression mode. But Stroud is still extremely talented. I like the way they're coached. I like their coach. Uh, as long as they have... I mean, I did, they did lose digs. I mean, that's for the season. But they have the quarterback, with the wide receiver back. I can't lay this kind of number with a team that's kind of in a regression mode. But this is, this is a tough one. I really don't have a call on this game because Levis is capable of playing well. Tennessee is just not a team you just want to bet on, though. So 
it, this is a pass for me. Uh, Denver at Vegas. Now, Vegas is a mess. Sorry, folks, but Vegas is a mess. They've got coaching issues. They've got player issues. They've got internal squabble issues. They've got running backs out. They've got linemen out. Denver is coming. Knicks is playing well, well coached. We know Peyton can coach. And somehow there's something going on. They've got a good marriage between the quarterback and the head coach and the offensive head coach, offensive uh, coach. Denver is the only side I would play in this game if you really feel comfortable of taking a division road favorite, laying a touchdown or close, five and a half, six. Uh, that's the only side I would be on in this game if I was going to play it. Arizona at Seattle, a big game. This is a big game, very important game. The NFC West with the Arizona Seattle, the Niners, we'll get to the Niners in the next game. And 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 of course uh, the Rams who are playing Philly, their their big games coming up. But I don't agree with Arizona being favored in this game. And it's either way, one on either side or pick them. You to take your choice. If you don't put pressure on Seattle's quarterback, he can hurt you. First of all, he can throw the ball and he has good wide receivers. If he gets any protection. And it'll get protection if you don't put pressure on him. So, and Arizona isn't known for do, doing that. Now, we can't fault the way Murray's playing because he's playing great. This is a hell of a game. This is a game <clears throat> that I would say is going to go down to the last couple of minutes. In the NFL, there hasn't been much home field advantage this year. It's been a strange year in a lot of ways. But they're playing in a climate that can be wet. It can rain. I mean, you can be nice and sunny and 15 minutes later in a downpour. So say it's the Northwest, and, and this is this is what it's like there. 47 and a half is the total. I haven't seen any movement in that. But right now, I would say this game, if the weather isn't terrible, and it's really not a, about talking about weather because I don't have any forecasts to tell you about. But I know it's I, – I, I had a home there one time. I know what it's like. It can go from bad to good or good to bad very quick. I would think there will be points in this game, but I see Seattle coming to play, and I think they're dangerous right now. And Arizona, if they run into into wet weather, that's not a wet weather team. They're coming from the dry Arizona desert. So I favor Seattle in the game. I favor points. But this is one of those things where you get down to game time and you check the weather and you get a pretty good idea what the hell it is. This is another game that's very interesting. This is a game that opened Green Bay one and a half and the total 47 and a half. Now it's down to 44 and a half, 45, Green Bay five and a half or six. Why? Well, Brock Purdy sitting, he's hurt. You got Boza hurt. You got the, the issue with the left tackle, Trent Williams, questionable. CMC hasn't played much this year. He doesn't look himself yet. I think he's coming back from an injury and he's not quite 100%. Green Bay's dangerous. They need this game. Love is an issue with me. I know he missed a couple games. He's hurt, but he's careless with the ball. He does things with the ball like Jameis Winston does. He can, he can be great or he can be ugly. He has talent. Same kind of player. Uh, I like Green Bay. I'm not laying five and a half. I'm sorry. I laid two. I did. I played the money line. I played Green Bay on the money line. And I laid two also in the game because not everybody will take everything you want. So you have to do what you got to do. But five and a half, I'm not, I'm not doing that. But it's the right side. I think, I think Green Bay money line, but you're laying a big price now with the line is five and a half, six. It's too much. Uh, Philadelphia at the Rams is a hell of a game. Philadelphia is kind of a strange team. They don't seem to get rolling until the second half of football games. They're just not a quick starter. They run the ball really well. Hertz capitalizes on that running game because when you have to stop the run, 
it gives you more options with passing. And he can run as well, and he's very strong. The Rams, they won last week, close. But the week before against Miami, that was an embarrassing effort by them. And I lost with that game. I thought they would they would win that game. I was, I was wrong. Uh, this is uh, Philly's favorite on the road at the Rams. Interesting. I like the coach better for the Rams, but the running game for Philadelphia scares me because right now in, in the NFC, the Lions look like the best team. Hell, the Lions might be the best team in football at the moment. But Philadelphia in the NFC looks like the second best team to me. And the way they run the ball and control the second half with that running game, because they physically beat you up with that running game, and in the second half it pays off, and you'll notice that. The second half bet with Philadelphia is not a bad idea, by the way. So here's what we're looking at. We're looking at two and a half, 48 and a half. You're indoors. Rams got their wide receivers, and you got Stafford, and Stafford can play football. I know he's up in years. I mean, he's been around the league 16 years, so he has to be, what, 38, 37, something, somewhere in that range. And you take a lot of hits over that number of years. But they can put up points. Philly can control the ball on the ground and slow it down. So it's hard to know how that will go. But I would lean over, but I would definitely lean Rams first half. That's just and then Philly second half. I mean, that might be the right way to bet this game. There's different ways of betting games. Thank God for that. Okay, the last game we have is on Monday, and this is a doozy. The Harbaugh. Jim against John. I mean, this doesn't happen often in, in sports, but uh, brother against brother, this has happened before in the Super Bowl. And Baltimore won that one. Now, this one is, and I, I don't quite understand this. Baltimore's two and a half. And 50 and a half, 51s. Chargers are playing well and they're well coached. And I know Baltimore, Lamar Jackson, and Henry and all that. And but they're strange. This is a team that should control the ball on the ground and let Lamar beat him up with the with the occasional pass or with his legs. But somehow Baltimore gets into a whole different mindset. And I don't know what – it's got to be the offensive coordinator. It has to be. They stop running the ball and they start throwing it all the time. Well, that's not their game. That's not what they're supposed to do. They shouldn't beat teams. They could have beat Pittsburgh. All they had to do – you get. how can you have Henry on your team and not give him the ball any more than 13 times in a game? Come on. Give me a break. But Harbaugh – Harbaugh against Harbaugh, I like the Chargers Harbaugh, Harbaugh better because I think he has the pedigree to know how to play this game properly. And I like the home dog in this spot. I just don't understand why Baltimore is even favored, quite frankly. Um, they have not played well defensively at times. They don't, they're offensive issues. And Herbert's as good a quarterback as anybody. If he's healthy, He's tough. So that's that's my rundown for the NFL for Sunday. I hope you enjoyed this recording. Uh, always come back to uh, our channels. We've got ProLine uh, TV on YouTube. you got JimFeist.com. you got get out there. See what we're doing. We're putting up good information every each and every day. So we want you to win, and we want to win. Because when I first started this business, I said, does a sports handicapper follow his own advice? And guess what? For 60 years, almost 60 years, I have. See you soon.